The Book of True Life, Teachings of the Divine Master, Volume 12, Spiritual Teaching, 340, Love Each Other. 1. With love and charity I come to remind you of my words that I gave you in the Second Era, in which I taught you to love each other, leaving clear traces of my love on your path. 2. I taught you to love your God before everything created, but in this third era I am again coming after your spirit to give him my love, my light, and my charity. 3. Do not leave my lap, because you do not know what tomorrow is going to grant you, and I do not want to find you weak. You are the chosen people who will rise up, showing the world the right way, and giving it syllable after syllable of the teaching that I have come to entrust to you. But my work is not just another religion. It is men who have formed the religions according to their intelligence. My work is a doctrine. It is a law that I have brought you from the beginning of time. 4. At this time humanity drains the cup of bitterness and says, It is God's punishment! But the Father tells you, I am love and I do not punish you. It is yourselves who have worked your purification. In this time I come to give you the teaching and you receive it through the word, intuition, clairvoyance, and revelation. I come to strengthen your spirit so that it is not surprised by temptation, which is always wanting to separate you from the path of light. 5. I listen to those who in the bottom of their hearts tell me, Make us worthy to be part of your apostolate. I say that after 1950 I will raise new disciples and servants of mine, who will receive my intuition and inspiration, my messages to speak to humanity. 6. You wonder the meaning of the seven rungs of the scale, and your master truly tells you. The number seven, it means spirituality. It is the spirituality that I want to see in my chosen people of Israel. You have to reach me with all your virtues and gifts developed. In the seventh step, or stage, of your evolution, you will come to me, and you will see that glory opens its doors to receive you. I do not abandon you for a single moment, and when the pain is in your heart, it is not because I have abandoned you, because my love is infinite. It is that the Father has allowed the pain to come to you, to wake you up and be alert. 7. You beloved people, you stand before your Lord on behalf of humanity. You are part of the tribes of Israel of the 144,000 marked of my chosen people, but some of you are in spirit and others in matter. 8. You will take this message of peace and consolation to all places on earth, because great is the need of humanity. I have left your saddlebag overflowing with my charity, and I have placed a sword in your hand so that you remove the darkness that would want to stop you on your way. 9. In this third era, I have prepared the table for you and have offered the spiritual delicacy to your spirit, because the Holy Spirit is He who enlightens you to penetrate into spirituality. 10. Elijah has been the forerunner in this third era. He has gathered you in the fold of my love and helps you to travel in this path so that you learn to forgive and love each other. Everyone who practices my teachings goes penetrating the light and tranquility, and joy overflows in his being. 11. In my love I have granted you free will, so that by your own will you come to me. But when you have not known how to elevate, I have come to you, to show you the way with the tenderness of my divine love. 12. The true spiritualist will be recognized not by his words, but by his good examples. To help you in your elevation, my luminous ray reaches your world to illuminate and elevate your spirit. 13. Humanity needs my love. 
my word that must reach the bottom of its heart. The Master fights tirelessly so that your spirit is more enlightened every day, so that by shedding ignorance you can rise to higher mansions. 14. The doors of my kingdom are open, and my divine word comes to you with infinite love to show you the road again. 15. I have come again among humanity, and it has not felt me, because I have presented myself in spirit, and in its great materialism, if your spirit has sprouted from my divine spirit, why has humanity not felt me? Because it has tied his spirit to materialism, to low passions, but here is the Lamb of God, who comes to you like light, to enlighten you and give you the truth. 16. My word is the food of your spirit. They are the crystalline waters, where it will be purified to receive from its God what belongs to him. Do not look for the treasures of the earth. Look for the eternal treasures, so that you recognize the greatness that surrounds you. 17. In times of difficulty, when you feel sad and dejected, rise up in prayer, so that you may receive from your Father charity. 18. My people, you feel dejected because faith and trust have been lacking, and I truly tell you, if you lack faith, you will lose strength and your spirit will feel weak, sad, and down. I want you to put your faith and trust in me so that you can achieve everything you need. Love so that you may be happy, be good and simple, suffer with patience, and forgive the offenses of your fellow men. 19. I have called you to receive my teachings again, and to let me dwell in your heart and do my will, so that I manifest myself through you, through good works. 20. In the second era, I, Christ, manifested myself through the lips of the Messiah, of Nazareth, and when men took my life away as man, this message of light continued to illuminate your world, and it will continue to do so throughout the ages. 21. Analyze each one of my words, and thus you will be able to penetrate to the light of truth, and your spirit will be able to be more and more great, and will rise up to the perfect scale of my spiritual light. 22. My light has always been among men, and it has been manifested through my messengers. The apostles of the second era, illuminated by the light of the Holy Spirit, they sowed the spiritual seed of my doctrine. In the third era, I come to teach you with infinite love, also making use of human understanding, so that when you feel filled with this light and this consolation, bring these lights and this charity to humanity. As I teach you, so teach. As you receive from me, so give my word to your brothers with infinite love, not to point out the faults of your fellow men, because I have not come to expose your faults. Go down the road sowing roses, even if you have to collect thorns. If the thorns hurt your heart, I will heal your wounds. I will give the balm, the comfort, and the spiritual strength. 23. My people, there is tribulation in the world, but truly I tell you, it will not be forever, because I have come to separate the darkness of the world and to leave him the spiritual light, so that this great tribulation may be removed forever, so that humanity feel happy, as is my will. But don't blame me for your pain, or your wars, because that has not been my will. 24. I have given you peace, union, brotherhood, and goodwill, and I have taught you how you should love one another. I do not want wars in your world, or that pain rule over you. It is humanity that has made it, because you have not known how to love or forgive. As a father, I have forgiven you, because if your sin is very great, so also has been your tribulation. For your pain, I have forgiven you, because everyone who suffers and cries, he is worthy of my pity and my mercy. 
and at this time I come to wipe your tears. 25. Love and forgive so that you pass to my kingdom carrying in your spirit a garment of light. Your master comes to show you the way so that you can save yourselves and just as I hold your hand and give it to your brothers and sisters and gently lead them along the road, expressing your love and good will. 26. What has been the cause of your pain, my people? Your mistakes. They have become the thorns that have wounded your heart, but my love comes to heal your wounds. 27. I tell you, do not earn yourself pain. Come my way with the white garment of virtues, so that you enter the kingdom of heaven. 28. You will be part of the spiritual hosts of luminous beings, because I have given you the light of the Holy Spirit, so that you can shine like the stars in the sky. 29. Again I tell you, I am the truth, the way, the light, and the life. Come to me. I call you to take these virtues of my Divine Spirit. 30. At this time I have been showing your spirit wide horizons so that you can move away from materiality and meditate on all the good you can do to humanity. 31. With meekness and obedience you will carry out my commands and bend your matter so that unified spirit and body do my will. 32. You have my love and my spiritual pleasures, and you who enjoy my peace pray for the nations that are in chaos. 33. I am making myself felt in the hard hearts of men, of those who carry the purpose of feeding the wars, so that they recognize that my will is stronger than their warlike purposes. If the heart of these men is hard and not moved by my will, my justice will be felt throughout the world. 34. Pray, beloved people, for humanity. Fight and work so that my charity may be received through you, because that is your mission and the restitution that your spirit carries in this time, so that you can do merits before me. 35. Do not sleep, Israel. Go forward in the fulfillment of your delicate mission with the light of the Holy Spirit. In this time rises youth and, like Cain, brothers with brothers take life. 36. Arise and give the world my light and the balm for its great sufferings. Fight with your sword of light and lead the world out of its sin. With your prayer remove the bad influences that overwhelm men. I want the world to recognize you as envoys of my divinity, and that in this time in which I am judging all of you, be my servants in whom I have placed the light and the power to break the darkness of the world. 37. Defend your children from idolatry at this time. In the different religions, many ask me, Lord, you said you would return. Why don't you manifest yourselves before us? They are the men who have not understood me, because I am keeping my word and doing my will among my chosen ones, so that they may be the messengers who awaken humanity and bear witness to my presence at this time. 38. Israel, in this third era, great crowds are waiting for you. You will be like irises of peace and light when you bring them good news. 39. It is necessary that you speak to those who hide my word and who adulterate my teachings. Speak to them with all clarity. I will be in your help so that you manifest yourselves before them, because they will be the men who will give reasons so that my work be censored tomorrow and my law altered, because they have added to my work what does not belong to them. 40. Humanity will accept my teaching out of conviction, but my true servants will not be puffed up like lords before humanity. Tomorrow you will have to get up strong to fulfill your mission in places near and far, so that the world penetrates in preparation and does my will. 
But how many trials await you, Israel? How many of my children will rise up like hungry wolves to want to destroy you? And if you are not prepared, you will feel greatly the pain when this is not my will. Bring preparation and be obedient to each of my commands, so that it may be good fortune in you and in humanity. 41. You spend your life telling me to forgive your faults, just as you forgive your brothers. But in truth I tell you, only the lips repeat those phrases learned by heart, but it is your heart that offer a real and true fruit of your works. 42. Sometimes when some test weighs on you and you wrongly attribute it to divine punishment, you say to me, Lord, if I have forgiven my brother, why don't you forgive me? Instead of saying, Father, forgive me if I didn't know how to forgive my brother with the truth and purity with which you have taught us. 43. If you learned to meditate for a few moments every day, and that your meditation were on the spiritual life, you would discover infinite explanations, and you would receive revelations that by no other means you could get. 44. Your spirit already has enough light to question me, as well as to receive my answer. The spirit of humanity has already reached great elevation. Observe your brothers of humble condition who, despite their poverty of knowledge, they surprise with their profound observations, as well as the clear way, and with that explain what for many others is something inexplicable. Do they go to books or to schools? No, but they have discovered by intuition or by necessity the gift of meditation, which is part of spiritual prayer. In their solitude, isolated from influences and prejudices, they have discovered the way to penetrate into communion with what is eternal, with the spiritual, with the true, and some more, others less, all those who have meditated on the true essence of life have received spiritual light in their understanding. 45. Man, through his spirit, will find the truth. Everyone will feel my presence, because I had already said since that time that every eye would see me when the right hour arrived. 46. Well, this time you are living is precisely the one announced by my word and by my prophets of the times past, so that all men see me through the senses and powers of their spirit. 47. It will not be necessary for them to contemplate me limited or figuratively in human form to be able to say that they have already seen, but it will be enough that his spirit feels me and his understanding understands me to say with all truth, who have seen me. 48. Love and faith, as well as intelligence, can look infinitely beyond what they can see with your eyes. That is why I tell you, it will not be necessary for me to limit my presence in human form, or through some symbolic figure, to make you see me. 49. How many who, in that second era, looked at me, or passed by my side, did not even know who I was? How many who did not even know when I was born as a man, looked at me in spirit, recognized me through my light, and they enjoyed my presence through their faith? 50. Open all your eyes, and justify with your faith that you are the children of light. 51. You can all look at me, but for this it is essential that you have will and faith. 52. The doors of the kingdom of that spiritual dwelling place where you must arrive to know everything are open, waiting for your spirit. 53. Be the greatest you can in this life, to have the necessary strength to climb towards the light, when be the liberation of your spirit. But be great in love and forgiveness, in charity and in light. Even when it sounds the hour in which you must leave matter, 
you will easily shed your terrestrial charge, and already free in the path of ascension, you will arrive smoothly at the mansion of peace. 54. To help you in your evolution, Again my word descends towards men to indicate to them the saving path. Gently I take the hand of men of good will to lead them towards the light, showing you at every step on the trail the beauties never before discovered. 55. When speaking of beauties I am not referring to those of nature, which for this you have awakened and developed your senses. I am talking about the beauties of the spiritual life, which you do not know, because when you have not been cold or indifferent to them, you settle for images or forms created by the human mind. 56. I give you the keys to open the door of your eternal happiness. Those keys are love, from where comes charity, forgiveness, understanding, humility, and peace, with which you must go through life. 57. How great is the happiness of your spirit when it has dominion over matter and recreates itself with the light of the Holy Spirit. 58. The trials of this life make you lose faith for a moment, but trust me, I strengthen you so that you fulfill your mission, and day after day I will strengthen your faith. 59. I have prepared you so that the purification of humanity may be lifted through you, so that you take my light to the nations that are facing their great problems. Humanity weeps and seeks freedom to penetrate the path of spirituality. 60. Every day I await the arrival of my new disciples to entrust them with my work and make them an example of humility and in a clean mirror for humanity they, without boasting that they are my chosen ones, they will rise up fighting and working as missionaries to give my light to the world. 61. Great is the number of crowds that listen to me at this time, but few are those who have prepared your heart as a sanctuary of my divinity. 62. The time for my communication between you is short and that is why I want to contemplate you prepared. I tell you, my children, the gates of my kingdom are waiting for you, just as when you crossed the desert with Moses in the first era to reach the lands of Canaan. You are like a prodigal son who returns to my father's lap, who feel my caress again, and you carry my teachings, and if you have arrived naked before me, I have covered you with my spiritual mantle, so that you do not feel ashamed. I have come to show you a new day, and to offer you the delicacies of my table, because I have contemplated your stumbling blocks, and as a father I have felt your pain, but in this time I have brought you comfort, my word like the bread of eternal life, my peace and joy in your life, so that you feel in my father's arms. 63. Also, the spiritual world has felt joy when it has contemplated that you are with me again. It has united with you to work in my countryside, to receive the needy and sick, to dispel the darkness and give the balm to the spiritually sick. 64. When you depart from me, it is when I watch closer to you, so that you do not succumb to the abyss, because my love is infinite. You are the ones I have called from the raging waves to show you the port of salvation. I will guide you on the path and my spiritual world will protect you and help you to rise to me. 65. The number of my servants has multiplied, but there will be few who will obey after my manifestation through human understanding, but I tell you that you will have my manifestation spiritually and having received my teachings page after page, now it's up to you to get up to make the call to humanity. 66. You carry in your spirit the gifts of the Holy Spirit and my love, so that you may be known as the people Marian Trinitarian Spiritualists. 67. The Holy Spirit will illuminate you 
the book of the teaching will remain open, and syllable after syllable you will understand everything that your master came to give you at this time. It will be the third testament that will come to humanity, the word that in this third era I came to give you through human understanding. 68. When the light of my Holy Spirit illuminates you fully, you will prepare with purity and love, so that from my word pick out its essence, and take it as sustenance and balm to humanity. 69. Moans and sobs of this humanity come to me, but I ask you, who has hurt you? Be quiet, and so I tell you, it was your mistakes that have hurt you that men have filled with sharp thorns along the way without wanting to understand that afterwards they have had to go through it. 70. Sometimes you judge that it is an injustice to have to suffer the consequences of the mistakes of those who already their time has passed on earth. But who of you can claim not to have been one of those who sowed thorns on the path? Many men will laugh at this doctrine but it will not be their spirit that mocks them, it will be their heart, because humans have always been skeptical and incredulous when it comes to the spiritual, but it will be enough for my word to be known to them so that, despite their irony and disbelief, something tells them that this word can enclose a background that, out of stupidity, they do not want to recognize. 71. Knowing my teachings, who will claim to escape divine justice? Nobody. 72. How many men, after having led an existence of sin, have been exempt from penalties and pains throughout their life, and when their last hour in the world arrives, they have believed they have mocked divine justice, or at less to have escaped her? Already in the spiritual valley, those beings, instead of finding the eternal torment of who had spoken to them in the world, with surprise they have been enveloped in a breath of light and peace, conducive to reflection and examination before your conscience. Who would have to tell you in those moments that the road they traveled on earth, they would have to walk again? and that's when the spirit feels the weight of a wise and inexorable justice, but it is materialized and does not understand eternity or spiritual improvement. He rebels, judging as unjust everything that is strictly just and loving. 73. If you all already had this knowledge, another would be the way you would cope with your jobs and sufferings. There would be no despair in your sorrows, but quite the contrary. Intimately, you would carry the satisfaction of being serving a restitution to purify your spirit, and instead of blaspheming and rebelling, thereby making that restitution more lasting and painful, you would go on striving day by day to lighten the burden, hoping to feel your spirit free of blemishes. 74. This third era which is that of judgment, is which spiritual restitution will reach its culmination to give way to a new era. I make my voice heard in the world to awaken men from their sleep and teach them how to turn their cup of bitterness into a cup of eternal life. 75. I come to reveal to you the way to shorten the days of affliction to tear off the thorn with which you have been wounded, and to tell you that I don't want you to get hurt any more on the way. I come to fight your mistakes, giving light to your understanding, so that he understands the causes of his sufferings, and knows how to avoid them, so you will not blame more to fate, or your brothers, of what happens to you, because the idea of being responsible will make you not hope that your vicissitudes will be remedied, but immediately you will get up, putting all your effort and will to free you from the yoke of suffering, sin, and ignorance. 76. The light is scattered throughout the universe. No man upon hearing this word will have the right to say that she led him into confusion. 
before this doctrine reaches the peoples of the earth, my spiritual presence will have awakened them, and they will present the arrival of the good news. My message will come to bless you, to console you, to help you to free yourself from materialism and rise to a better life, closer to the truth. 77. Well then, disciples, if you are to return to the world one or more times, be it so that you may reap fruits pleasant, cultivated by you before, so that your spirit experiences the satisfaction of having before them the opportunity to conclude some work begun. 78. Do not leave this planet without first having carried out the work on it entrusted to your spirit. 79. How painful for those who have to return and find that work that they barely started, and that now you will have to see him attached to new missions, responsibilities, and jobs. 80. I come to help you repair your mistakes, to reveal to you the secret of making up a lost year in one day, and in a year a century of misuse, thus enable you to conquer eternity. My peace be with you.